Hi everyone, Kevin here from Golf Guy Reviews and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Birdie Ball Training Aid. Now this is a practice golf ball that they currently sell in America and the guys over at Birdie Ball have sent over a pack for me so I can give them a review and let you know what I think. Now the whole idea behind Birdie Ball is that you can practice anywhere and the, what they mean by that is that actually the ball, as you, as you can see here, is hollow. So that means you can hit it with a pitching wedge, you can hit it with a hybrid, you can hit it with a 7-iron, you can hit it with a driver, and it will only travel between 40 to 60 yards. So we're going to put that to the test in this video today. I'm going to let you know what it feels like to practice with a birdie ball and whether I think they're any good. I hope you enjoy my video today and make sure you hit that like button if you do. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel because not only can you keep up to date on all my latest reviews of golf shoes, clothing and tech, but I'm also going to be giving away these birdie balls. So, if you live in the UK, all you need to do to enter is subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below. At the end of February, I'm going to pick one lucky winner and you're going to win all the birdie balls as well as the stripe pad. So, make sure you subscribe to my channel. So, the pack that's been sent over to me to review contains 12 of these birdie balls as well as a stripe pad as well. Now, that currently retails in the States for around $51 plus your postage as well. So the whole purpose of the birdie ball is that you can practice anywhere. Now with the birdie balls themselves, as I mentioned, these have got these hollow design and they're made out of this kind of high strength polymer, I suppose, like a plastic material. Uh, and because of the shape of it, you can hit it as hard as you like with any club you want and it will only travel between 40 to 60 yards. Also with the mat that comes in the pack as well, it means that if you aren't practicing on turf, then you can actually use the mat, you can put it on concrete, you can put it on wood or whatever surface, and you can still practice with the birdie ball. Now, if you take a very quick look around, you can see that I've not got the biggest garden in the world. So I'm not gonna be able to fully test the birdie ball here. So we're gonna need to find somewhere where we can go have a practice. So given that this has come all the way from the States for this review, and I think this is possibly one of the first video reviews here in the UK, Let's go find somewhere to play. So I did think about hitting a few on the steps of St Paul's this morning, but it seems a little bit busy. The tower bridge behind me. The tower in London over there. I wonder whether Henry VIII ever practiced his chipping. So I popped into Hogwarts by King's Cross and everyone was playing a game called Quidditch. No one playing any golf. We'll have to try somewhere else. Should we go see the Queen? There we go, we made it, Buckingham Palace. The flag's up, so the Queen's in. Now to be fair, she's probably not using birdie balls. I reckon she's got enough money, she's out back chipping Pro V1s over the Corgis. What do you reckon? Right, we've come over to my local park, it's about a five minute walk from my house, uh, and hope the birdie ball enjoyed the trip around London. Uh, so we're gonna see how the birdie ball actually performs. So, you know, it says play anywhere, my garden's not big enough, so we've come to the park, we've got a nice big open space, we can give it a test, see what it comes out like. Let's give it a whack. So, very first impressions. Uh, they do feel quite nice to hit. Uh, they don't feel as light as a, uh, uh, as a wiffle ball. Um, they don't quite feel the same as a golf ball, I've got to admit, you know, there's not quite that same feeling, but there's definitely, there's definitely a bit of resistance when you hit the ball there, so it's quite a, quite a nice feeling off the club face. Uh, the first one didn't count, that was a bit more of a shank really. Um, but the second two, nice nice trajectory. Um, they do make this weird kind of wah, 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 wah noise as they go, which is a bit, uh, bit weird, but you know, that's just the aerodynamics of the ball. Uh, but you can see there they flew about 40 yards. Uh, both of them were quite nice and straight. Uh, we're going to ignore the first one. Um, so let's go grab those and we're going to go check out and hit a few more. Right, so another element with a birdie ball is that you can hit a draw or a fade with it, supposedly, uh, or a hook or a slice. Uh, so let's give that a go. So I've picked up a, a seven iron and we're going to try and see if I can hit a draw, uh, which I don't naturally hit. And then we're going to see if we can hit a fade. There's quite a lot of wind out here, so it might get affected, but let's see what happens. 
Right, we're going to start with an attempt at a draw, okay? I tried to come back. I'd say that's, um, I'd say that's more the wind, actually. It started with a draw and it just kind of stayed straight. So let's try again, another draw. No, that's just me not being able to hit a draw. It's all right, let's try a slice instead. Or a fade. Now that definitely had a bit of a fade to it, that one. Uh, I can hit the fade a lot easier. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident you can hit a draw or a fade with these if you can hit a draw or a fade. Um, I just wanted to show the stripe pad a little bit actually. Uh, so you can see here that it's made from this kind of plastic material on the top and then you've got foam underneath um, So you can use it on concrete or anything like that and you, it's not going to damage your clubs when you strike the ball uh, But also this is a public park So I didn't want to take out any divots on the grass or anything um, But you can see here on the stripe pad depending upon whether you're a right-hander or a left-hander You've got this kind of pattern on there So it gives you an idea of a nice arc for your club as you swing ball uh, as you swing through and then you can put down your, uh, your ball on the edge there and as you can see there it kind of slopes away at the bottom here so the idea is, is that you can still strike down on the ball um, and you're still not going to take a divot or damage the turf damage the club or anything like that so it's quite a cool little piece of kit really so in the box you get 12 birdie balls and you get uh, four different colors uh, so i bought three clubs with me to the park so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hit a pitching wedge with the black one sorry about the mud and the dirt but you know it's pretty muddy over here but a pitching wedge with a black one we're gonna hit a seven iron with this kind of, what do you call that, teal color one. Fancy color that, teal. Uh, and then we're gonna hit a free hybrid with this red one. And we're gonna see uh, whether there's any huge difference in how far they go. Uh, so let's give it a try. Right, black one, pitching wedge first. Teal one, seven iron. Red one, three hybrid. Right, so before I go take a look, they all went kind of about the same height really, which is quite interesting, given that they're really, really different lofts of clubs. Uh, let's go take a look. Just want to show the sacrifice that my shoes are taking at the moment. That's impressive. Right, so just coming up to the first one, and let's have a look here. The first one is actually the red one. Uh, so the red one, which was the hybrid, so actually worked the shortest. And then literally a couple of yards, maybe, you've then got the black one, which was the pitching wedge. And then finally, we've got probably a little bit further on, not too far really, maybe another five to 10 yards. We've got the teal one, or as my wife said, the green one. Uh, so, it's quite interesting. Uh, I think that kind of comes down to the strike that on some of those. Uh, the hybrid definitely seemed to go off a lot higher than the pitching wedge, which I think was my fault really, um, in the way that I struck the ball. Uh, but you know, that was all pretty close really. Uh, so to hit a pitching wedge and a free hybrid, all about the same length really, give or take five to 10 yards, I'll take that I think. I think that's, uh, I think that's doing what it says on the tin. So one other thing that I wanted to test while I'm out is, hold on, there's a dog currently running behind and here's a doggy, hello! <laughs> hello! <laughs> and there's another one, look at this! This is the joy of filming over the park, everyone. Dogs everywhere. Oh, look at this one. Right, one other thing that I wanted to test as well was actually how does the birdie ball compare against the old school wiffle ball? Now, the birdie balls are 12 for $30. Uh, whereas I bought these off of Amazon, uh, six wiffle balls for a couple of quid. Um, so these are a lot, lot cheaper. But let's see the difference in the feel, how they fly. There's quite a bit of breeze about today going left to right, as I said. So that's probably going to affect it a lot. Let's give it a try. So starting with a birdie ball. Even with the breeze, that went quite nice and straight actually. I had a 
tiny little bit of draw on it. It's actually quite a nice shape. Now we'll try the wiffle ball, but it won't actually stay on the mat, so I'm gonna to have to play this one off the ground. I'm not even gonna hit another one. I'm not even gonna hit another one because the wind just took it. It went about half the distance, but I felt I had zero control over it, and I didn't feel it at all off the cup face. Um, whereas with a birdie ball, it's not quite the same as a golf ball, I've got to admit but you're getting a decent amount of resistance from it. So it definitely feels like you're hitting something. You can definitely feel that connection. With the wiffle ball then, it was like it was just an air shot. I didn't feel anything. So I definitely prefer hitting the birdie ball over the wiffle ball. Right, so while we're over here, Susie actually decided that she wants to go. So uh, let's see what she does. Well, it was a connection. It was a good connection. Well, it was a connection, but it's not a bad looking swing. So here we go, ball number two. So we can launch it in the air a bit. Whoa, that's staying on film. That's a, that's an air ball, that one. Here we go. Yeah, nice hit, nice hit. Have one more. And I've got to say, while Susie's hitting this, you know, we didn't come over expecting Susie to hit the ball, but actually that's the joy of this birdie ball a little bit. It's actually really fun to play with. You know, if you're out in the park, it's a, uh, it's nice and easy to set up. That's a great strike there, that one. It's nice and easy to set up. And, you know, the only problem is, is now Susie's got to go get her own balls. Uh, but as I say, it's <laughs> as I say, it's nice and easy to set up. It's nice and quick to take out. If you've got a big enough garden, that's great. It's going to be really easy. It's nice and good for the kids to use because you're not going to cause any damage as well. Um, I should be playing some Hulk music here, actually, as she walks away. It's quite, um, cutting quite a lonely figure. Right, so we're back from the park, and one thing that I didn't mention was that the sound of the birdie ball when you strike it is actually pretty similar to the sound of a normal golf ball when you strike that. Now, of course, I was using the strike pad, so that has a little bit of an effect on the sound as well, because that's gonna make more of a noise than if you're just playing it off of normal turf. But generally, when you hit the birdie ball, it kind of sounds the same as when you hit a golf ball. Uh, so that's quite a good positive as well. As I mentioned before, that the feel is slightly different. So this does certainly feel uh, lighter when you strike it. Doesn't quite feel the same as a golf ball, but you certainly can feel that you're striking the birdie ball. So in summary, I quite like the birdie ball as a training aid. If you've got a big enough space in your back garden or you live close enough to a public space that you can use, then definitely you can use the birdie ball to really practice your strike and your swing technique. It also means that you haven't got to worry about how far the ball's gonna go and whether it's gonna cause any damage if it hits anything. What I also really like about it is the fact that actually it can mimic a draw or a fade depending upon how you hit and strike the ball. So again, if you're looking to work on your draw, for me personally, I haven't got the room for me to practice that at the moment. But with the birdie ball, I can pop over to the park and I can, uh, I can work on my swing, not a problem at all. So I think it's actually a really clever aid. So if you're looking for the birdie ball, check them out, go visit their website. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to be giving away the birdie balls as well as a strike pad to one lucky UK winner. So all you need to do is comment down below and make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm going to pick a winner at the end of February and then I'll contact you and get it shipped out. So good luck. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this video, so make sure you give it a like if you did. And please make sure you subscribe to my channel so not only you can enter the competition, but you can keep up to date on all my latest reviews of golf shoes, clothing and tech right here on Golf Guy Reviews.